So there's a 7-7 seven, seven shark. There's an Ugin. Ugin can mine us on the Emancipation and we're done. But then we can wipe everything. I just wish we could hit. Really? Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. Today we embark on the journey to discover whether or not cruel control is viable within the Zendikar standard meta. Um, you know, first of all, we're using red as removal, green as ramp, and then we've got uh, some colorless shenanigans, so Ugin can do his minus and not wipe our field, leaving us with nothing, and then hopefully leaving our opponent with very little to nothing as well. So those are our main components within the deck is ramp and removal. We're using Ugin as our end game finisher. So let's see how we're gonna make Gruul control work and get some wins within the percentage mythic rank uh, within arena today in again the standard best of one meta we have four copies of shock instant speed two damage to any target this is great for picking off weak creatures it's also great for dealing that little bit of extra damage to the opponent to win the game spike field hazard also instant speed for one dealing one damage to target a uh, creature uh, or permanent it could be a planeswalker i guess as well and if uh permanent dealt damage this way would die you actually exile it instead so we see Luris around we want to make sure we're exiling Luris and you know any rogues or anything else played before Luris it's nice to get that out of the way as well so it's not replayed um you know Kroxa is in the meta right now when it enters the battlefield it immediately sacks itself you can hazard it for one and when it sacrifices itself it actually goes to exile so that's a pretty cool trick there as well so it's nice to just kill things that you don't want to ever see again into our two drops, we have three copies of the Shatter Skull Smashing. Now this does cost X as an additional to the two, dealing X damage divided as we choose among uh, up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If it's six or more, we'll deal double uh, X damage divided as we choose instead, which is really cool. And then of course, uh, it can come in as the Hammer Pass. We can pay three life to make sure that it's coming in untapped so we can use that mana this turn. Four copies of the Tome. This is just great uh, for the consistency of the deck we can tap it to scry one, right? Making sure that our next turn's really good. And uh, we can also pay two to tap it to draw a card. So, you know, if we have the mana, you know, I do recommend the draw rather than the scry, but if not, then, you know, the scry is better than nothing. And of course, each one of those will put a counter on it every time we do it. And when there's four counters, we have to sacrifice the tome. But when we do that, we gain four life. We have two copies of Tangled Florhedron, you know, comes in tapped as the green source. And of course, it will come in as the 1-1 one, one elemental that can tap or a green source. So, you know, if you don't have the land right away and you don't have a one drop, play this, get it out of the gate, and then you're not bricking later on. And, you know, if you do have the land, you can play this as a two drop. And it's like on your third turn, you'll have dropped two land on your last turn because you'll get to replay this. Uh, hopefully, as long as it's not removed, right? Four copies of Scorching Dragon Fire, instant speed, three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If it dies, exile it, similar to the Spike Field Hazard. Uh, this is great. Instant speed for three is uh, very, very good as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> getting into our three drops here, we do four copies of Cultivate at Sorcery Speed. Uh, we're searching our library for up to two basic cards, uh, land cards that is. One goes into our hand, the other into the battlefield tapped, uh, which is pretty cool, right? It's just some standard ramp for your three drop. Rata, Heart of Keld, 3-3 uh, three, three when it's our turn, it has first strike. And we can also look at the top card of our library and play lands from the top of our library, um, which is really nice. So typically, I will not drop the Heart of Keld until our fourth turn, because when we're playing our third land, then we play it. There's a chance for removal without us actually getting any value from it. But when we are on our fourth turn, we can play it, right? And then we can play that land for that turn, um, you know, right from our library instead of our hand, gaining a little bit of card advantage there. And we can also pay six to give it plus X plus X, where X is the number of lands we control. So that's going to be really nice because we are ramping really efficiently within this deck. We've got a single copy of the Crystalline Giant, 3-3, three, three, at the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose a counter that's not on it already, and then put that counter on it uh, from among all the different counter types, Reach, Vigilance, Trample, plus one, plus one, Flying, Death Touch, you name it, they're all there. And of course, we've got four copies of the Skyclave Relic. This is an indestructible artifact, um, so it can't be destroyed, which is quite neat. And it's got kicker for three, so total for six. And when you do kick it, 
you'll create two copies of it. So you'll get three copies of it in total, which in my opinion is very, very good value. And then of course we can tap it to add one mana of any color, which is really nice as well. It's also colorless, so it survives our Ugin minus. Four copies of Solemn Simulacrum, colorless, 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, put a land card into play tapped, awesome. And then when it dies, draw a card, right? That's doing exactly what we want. Two copies of Storm's Wrath at sorcery speed, dealing four damage each creature and each planeswalker. Uh, you know, wiping our field, wiping our opponent's field. This is kind of like a nuclear option. If things really degrade uh, to that point where you need to use this, um, you know, it's fine as long as, you know, your Ugin's not in play. And we can actually combo that with our single copy of Fiery Emancipation for six an enchantment that will allow our damage to deal uh, triple that amount, which is really, really cool. So, you know, the Storm's Wrath hits for 12 instead of four. And then, you know, we also have the Ugin's plus ability, which would deal three damage. It's actually now dealing nine damage. So, you know, woof, woof, uh, minus X. Uh, also on this creature here, exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. Uh, that's going to be great. You know, exiling your opponent's board state and hopefully you keep your Godzilla, keep your Simulacroms. Uh, you know, obviously your Tomes and your Relics stay as well. And uh, you should be able to close out the game. If not, maybe you've got your Emancipation in play. You can just plus to deal a bunch of damage. And of course, minus seven, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put seven permanents from your hand into the battlefield. Uh, permanents are lands, you know, our relics, our tomes, our simulacrums. You know, we do have a fair amount of instances here, but again, those cards will just remain in our hand that we can play later on. So uh, that's really cool. If you can get to the minus 10, throw an emancipation out there, and then, you know, you've got a couple shocks uh, to close out the game because it should be uh, later on in the game, right? So. That's the general idea you know we've got some pathways and some forests and mountains there just to to fill everything up there are very few lands we're sitting on 18 but take note of the hazards take note of the smashings right uh so there are more land in there the floor hedrons as well and then of course the relics uh are a form of mana for us and the cultivate so you know you shouldn't have really any land problems we played like six games not once did i have land issues it's very friendly that way even though there are so few of them and again uh, the question today is the consistency of Gruel worth dropping the blue, right? Uh, for Timir. Are we, we're losing Genesis Ultimatum. Is the consistency of getting to Ugin better or is it worse, right? Because uh, sometimes the three mana can be a little bit harder. Um, but again, I think if you were short on cards and you didn't have the land to make the three color deck work, this is a really, really good variant. And, uh, you know, I think it works great. It's just going to come down to uh, how fast can you get that Ugin out and how upset are your opponents. So, you know, in the higher Mythic ranks, your opponents are really going to want to play their matches out because they're looking to get ranked for the end of the month. But if you're in the lower ranks, you drop Ugin, you're probably just going to win the game, right? So uh, <laughs> easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel to a friend. And of course, hit that bell icon so you're notified of our future uploads. We do gem giveaways on YouTube twice a day on our live premieres to encourage uh you know lots of people showing up right away which boosts the algorithm because there is lots of early engagement so come get some free codes with that and uh, yeah enjoy this gruel controlled gameplay uh you know this is actually one of the more fun decks that i've had playing in a little bit so take keeping seven playing first you know i've got a pretty decent hand i'm gonna play our well no, I won't. I'll play the mountain, hold up shock, play the forest, and then play the Florhedron on the same turn. And hopefully we draw another land in that process. Yes, we do. That's perfect. So let's ramp up. Next turn, we potentially have four for a Simulacrum. We could also Sky Relic. Egg in play. It's not great. I think both of these are fine options. I mean, we do have to pay life for this one, but I don't think that's an, a big deal. And they're also getting more of a field presence. And when it dies, we draw a card. So, you know, we're worried about uh, Ugin probably here and the Sky Relics can survive. If it's, uh, you know, a Doom foretold or something, then we're gonna have to sack and the then it doesn't matter. They get hexproof immediately. <laughs> that's quite nice. So we're sitting on four, we could go to five. Uh that's not quite six.
So we can't kick this one. Um, but we could just double down. And I think that's maybe better than kicking it next turn. Or let's just put up a blocker. And then we can kick the relic next turn. Should we attack into this? No. The Sky Scanner. Nice. Okay. Vigilance. So let's kick this. Right, we get copies of it now, which is pretty neat. We should probably shock this thing, right, at some point. Things could be cheaper per artifact. I don't know, let's just take care of it now. Man, they've got a lot of life. Let's start threatening them, though. I would love to get rid of this giant before it grabs first strike or something. <laughs> Let's end our turn. We will block with the Simulate Chrome for the draw. We have, uh, you know, a few relics in play. <laughs> They've got a monument. Nice. I want a monument. Watch it grab Trample or something. <laughs> Yeah, so we get the jump block in the draw here. The terrible thing is both of these are colorless, so our Ugin's got uh, more work to do than it normally would. Like, this thing's got hexproof. Like, I don't even know. And we are not doing great with this draw. I guess if it's gonna be like this, we might just need to go, you know, emancipation. All right, that's what we want to do. Decent. Yeah, we lose everything here. We can hit Gruel in the choppers. This comes in as a three-three. We can't hit it. You act without Simulate crown for the land. Not that it matters. Sky scanner. We can pick up and concede here. Good game. Going first is great. Um let's play slow. Double shock next turn if we need. Luris is annoying. We do have to save one shock for the Luris. So the spike field as a land was really bad for us. Like, real bad. Oh, still holding up our shock here. Through the relic. Another L said. No, we, we just have to hold the shock for Luris. Let's take it.
Now we have a blocker, so the L-sets are worthless. Shoot. That's annoying. What's up with this land draw? I have 20 lands in the deck. That's all I'm pulling is lands. Ridiculous. The oven, that kind of interrupts our shock spell. And a speaker, just in time. Yeah, they're gonna have to oven that, but it's gone at least. Take the draw here. Well, it's not the worst. I would love uh, Vigilance. Plus one, plus one, Death Touch. Death Touch on first strike would be optimal. We could just block this. If only we had a shock. <laughs> oh, nice. I did not expect this. But I did expect this. This is like a minus two. It's so easy. And we just want to be winning with... Brute Force Ugin plays. Okay, so this hand is like really nice. We have all three different kinds of land wrap basically here. Um, you know, Yorion, so. <sighs> Let's just play our mountains. You know, maybe we play this next turn tapped if we don't draw land. I don't really want to pay life for Rada, right? Okay. That's not good either. Let's come in slow here, and then that solves the problem. Let's Relic. We already have the cards, so the draw from Tomes. It's great, but we'll... Cast it later because it's cheap, right? Uh, it costs less than the relic, so it's easier to sneak in. Loving these old lands. So good. Solemn Simulator Crumbs, a guaranteed land drop. And then we don't have to pay life for the smashing, or the hammer pass, I should call it, I guess. They're cultivating, that's fine. I feel like we already did that, but we didn't. <laughs> didn't need to. So if we don't draw land, you know, we do go in the, with the Heart of Keld, and then we have a second chance at one off the top. We don't, so we do. And there it is, perfect, right? Not missing a beat, baby. And we double Tome here. I talked about sneaking those in every turn, using our mana as effectively as we can. Yes! <laughs> so an unusual Gruul deck, right? Opponents, like, not too sure what's going on. Tome's an odd play. Relic's an even odder play. You know, Simulator Crumb could get behind, and uh, Art of Keld is decent. Really? And a Shia. Interesting. 
That's a five CMC. They have to block. We have a 7-7 seven, seven with first strike, is the thing. So we'll just take the chops. Oh, 10? Oh, because uh, it gets plus 7, plus 7. And it's already a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> I should know these things. And they are turn. We have lots of lands, so I'm going to scry this Cultivate away. They also need to deal with us. We still have 8 mana available, so even if they Ugin, we can toss ours in there. The hand is the one thing Ugin doesn't deal with. Oh my god! Wow. What kind of janked up deck is this? I thought we were playing against Yorion Control. There's an auspicious Sterix and Great Henge in here? What?! Oh my god. What have we just walked into? They still have to block. We could just draw it. Let's scry with one. And we'll... Draw with this and we'll replay it after the wipe. Or if we just toss it. Let's just toss it. Alright, so that's been dealt with. We can draw the tome. I like that. And if we just get Ugin out and start plussing, another ultimatum. Wow. Alright, so there's summoning sickness, so like, I don't think that goes away, even though there's another attack phase. Not oh, without haste. They're down to 47. We're at 45, so, you know, they've already gone through an extra 20 cards than we have. <laughs> so I don't think the landfall matters. Um... Wow. Two ultimatums in one turn. I haven't done that since opening day. There's a terror, so that sucks. A Shia and a Sea God. We might die. <laughs> a Shia hits us for 19, and then the Scoot hits us for one. That's a good game. <laughs> Wow. Oh, and all the scoots will hit us for one as well. Big woofs. I want to get hit for this 19 from Ashaya. Oh, it's a 2020 now. Yeah, there it is. Woo! <laughs> Alright, our opponent's going first, finally.
Probably keep this for the exile. We've been burned every time we haven't. But then again, I don't want a brick. We remove what we need to. Ugin can get the rest. Do we need to remove that? Not really. But it is good. Well, no. Let's leave it. It does need to be removed, but maybe we can just get it with a Storm's Wrath. Alright, I was not expecting that. <laughs> we were going to remove it. I can't believe we didn't. Uh, let's just keep that there. Let's get hit for four, I guess. I can't believe we didn't shock it. <laughs> oh my god. And if we did shock it, then something else crazy would have happened, right? All right, hit for four. Let's hit it now while it's still, you know, dazed. Or do we want a ramp? And then just minus on it. I think let's deal with it now. Even though it's less than ideal, let's just snag it. And, uh, you know, we'll pick up where we left off later. <laughs> Unbelievable. I can't believe we didn't shock it. And we just lost our removal. <laughs> Not on the Broad Moth. Alright, Ugin. We're coming for you as quick as we can. One, two, three, f okay, sorry, five, this is six, this would be seven, eight, and nine, so the shock can stay, or should we look for a wrath, let's look for a wrath, because they're going to play another thing here, even though we're going for the Ugin wipe, maybe they skyclave the moth, Eliod, uh-oh, uh oh, <laughs> life gain, whatever. Um, you know, it's not, it's unpleasant. All right, we kicked and we can scry. Land can go. We do not need any more of that. We can put a stop on our upkeep to strike again. Sploosh. That's a big hit. Oh! They're so close. If they minus, I think they win. Yeah. Shit! We're so close. We're so close. <laughs> all right. Surely, with all this removal, we're going to get matched up against a creature deck. <laughs> I can't believe we lost that last game. We were one turn away.
What a life. So, similar situation here. Where, you know... I don't want to lose this. But at the same time... We need to ramp. We have lots of shocks, so, you know, we can get away with it. I guess. I mean, feels bad, but... We got burned last time, so let's not get burned again. I don't need two 2-2 two, two cats. Okay, so this is more our style. A nice slow thing that doesn't do anything for the turn. Three land, drop to four. We have five. Still three away, and we need an Ugin. It's annoying. That's fine, though. Let's take our scry. Oh, the relic's great. Just taking Daxos now. I mean, it gets so strong. And we have the draw here as well. They're good gaming us. Let's take Hollow Priest out as well. And let's take our Scry here. Land is fine. Simulate Chrome in play. Doesn't matter. This ensures that we have six. But it also allows us to remove for three next turn. I think we'll be fine. For saying good game so many times in a row, you think they would have conceded. We should have kept that, I guess. LOL. Land can go. We're already at six. Let's kick it. Let's take our hit. They should just let it go through. They're gonna block, we get the draw, which is ideal. That's exactly what we want. Interesting. And our turn, we can scry. Okay, the question is, do they have life gain here? That dodges our Storm's Wrath. Let's take our Scry. Four life mitigates their damage. Land can go. Down to 20. We have enough land. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? <laughs> a double Storm Wrath on a single moth? Uh, seems to be good mana conversion. <laughs> Alright, Tome and play, let's take a draw. Ugin. Ugano! This uh, can just come and tapped. So we can minus three on Ugin, and that's going to be fun. One more heart before they concede. Land in play. Ugin go. 
We could even just plus on this instead of minusing. Airy stay alive, but are they really going to be gaining life? Take our draw. Still one mana left. And we get a replacement. We could have minused. What? Why is Guru playing Ugin? That's today's objective. And it may not be the strongest deck, I get it. But uh, in theory, you should be able to use red for removal, green for ramp, and there's Ugin, and you win the game. <laughs> um, things you're going to want to play around is the Great Henge. The Great Henge can get Ugin. Now we're going to get roped, because they were hello good gaming us, and we were giving them hearts. I think we somehow got turned around. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> All right, you know, as far as our opponent's concerned, Ugin players deserve to get roped. I would love to make these relics creatures as well. That could be fun. Karn, where are you? Yes, Ugin. We have an Ugin right here. Ta-da! <laughs> Oddly enough, we are doing some filming. We've got some good Ugin jokes coming your guys' way after we get roped. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. Your go, bro. <laughs> It's a tiny Uganos. A little baby Ugin. If you leave two Ugins together, maybe one morning you'll come back and there'll be a third. Let's hit him with the Blasto. And the Drawski. And the, so much land in this deck. I don't know what that's about. Um let's end our turn. Imagine waking up and seeing Ugin in your window. That would be terrifying. Just like, you know, vapor coming off of him. Oh my god. That would be terrifying. But then he just like hands you the new magic release. He's like, you have been chosen. That's how all the content creators get their uh, wizards merch delivered. Like, uh, the pelican delivers babies and Ugin delivers uh, magic merch. <laughs> All right, this has been the best rope of my life. Uh, we'll take the win. I'm actually having a little bit of fun with this deck. All right, we get countered and then they ramp. Looks like we're in trouble. Yeah. 
You know, we're just going to get slammed, so we need to keep this Emancipation. And I want a ramp. No, as long as we Emancipation next turn. This will be fine. We don't need three copies of it right now. Right, that seal gives us our dragon fire. So here's the Genesis Ultimatum. Oh no, that's only six. They need seven. Dark Typhoon. That's just awesome. So they're not tapped for our Emancipation, which is cool. Or they are tapped, sorry. And uh, our Wrath is real good right now. But we need to deal with that shark because it does stuff all the time. So there's a 7-7 seven, seven shark. There's an Ugin. Ugin can minus on the Emancipation and we're done. But then we can wipe everything. I just wish we could hit. Really? <laughs> I bet they wish they would have minus on the Emancipation after that. <laughs> oh my god. There's no way for us to beat these sharks though is the thing. <laughs> Alright, we need our Ugin. That's not it. It does thin us though. I don't know, just wipe the sharks. I really need that Ugin. <laughs> That's what they're thinking too. I'm sure they've got more Genesis Ultimatum, so so whatever. Whatever. Right. Now we need a Storm's Wrath off the top. Another Genesis Ultimatum. Oh, just a beanstalk giant. Nice game. Ouch. Okay, our opponent goes first. We draw a land so we can keep the hazard. If not, it's got to go in. Okay, so we can keep it. I think. Maybe not. Screw it. Let's just go for it. We should have been able to keep it, but I'm not sure it's going to hit anything. I don't think that warrants removal, but let's just take it. All right, we're at four. We have five and six in hand. Simulate crumbs out. Us too. That takes us to five, this takes us to six, allows us to kick our relic. We 
Prophecy. Nice scry and draw engine. I'm going to shock my own Simulacrum. Just for the draw. Take the damage, that's fine. Let's kick our Relic. Play our lands. You know, we could uh, exile this ourselves. That's probably our best bet. So they choose a card name here. We get to see what it is. So we know that they're going to try to play the card that they uh, name next turn. The birth of Maltese, that's fine. That's going to win the game, unless we can pull an Ugin. It's thinner library. Take a draw. Let's take another draw. We can set a stop before our draws to take two scries. Never mind. The uh, Sea God actually taps our tome as well. So that stop can go off. I thought those were just creatures, but it's all of our permanents, which is our extra mana. So we need to top deck some spice. Are you serious? Mirror mate on the best of the sea god. Holy. What a life. We need to top deck an Ugin. Ouch. Oh. Just shock me. So that's like, ugh, that's what it comes down to. It's like, I hate this. Taking our tomes. Which, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's just show ourselves out. We're getting smashed for 16 anyways. Alright, so, you know, I don't think it's a bad deck. I don't think it's a great deck. Um, I would say it's really original. But, just because it's Gruul Control uh, doesn't make it very original, I feel like. We're still just relying on Ugin, so there's the argument. Um, but again, I think it's something that gets overlooked. Typically, Gruul is the smash and bash archetype, but it has the other requirements to make it work, right? Um, you know, especially if we can get some colorless draw incorporated, like the Simulate Chrome and like the Tome, to make things more consistent, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't liked already, please do so. Share the channel to a friend and of course, subscribe for more content. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and we'll see you soon in another video.